Welcome back to the channel. Today we are going to do a video on a 2500 Silverado and Ram and I wanted to show you why this Silverado is a better buy over this Ram. Let's get into it. Really quickly, be sure to subscribe to JB Reviews and make sure you have those bell notifications on and be sure to check out my other channel, Attainable Exotic Cars. And be sure to check out Criswell Chevrolet and Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram Store in Thurmont, Maryland. Let's just be clear here, hate it or love it, this is the most over-designed truck of all time. I think that a lot of people hate it because it's not something you're used to. You're used to seeing this. This is very contemporary, very soft, and it's what you're used to seeing. So when you see this, you're like, oh wow, this is just too much going on. But I think that this is very different and I think it has like a cool factor to it, especially with this blackout package. Now, as you guys can see on the hood here, something that Silverado does that Ram doesn't is they do give you a functional hood scoop. So you're feeding a lot more air into the engine to make it breathe better. All right guys, so who has a better diesel engine? Well, if you're thinking about power, it goes to the 6.6 .6 Duramax. Now this Duramax is gonna be good for 445 horsepower, 910 pound-feet of torque. It is made it to a 10 speed, all right? Now, if you buy a three quarter ton 2500 Ram, unfortunately, you can only get the standard Cummins. And this is only good for 850 pound-feet of torque, 370 horsepower. It's made it to a six speed transmission and some people will say that this is not the greatest transmission, although I beg to differ. But all in all, the clear winner here is 100% the Silverado. It has more power, it has a better transmission, and the gears are a lot deeper in first and second, third, fourth, I think up to fifth gear. So you're going to have you know, a lot better pulling power if you are going up grades. Now, let's talk about engine block heaters. If you live up north, an engine block heater is probably very necessary, especially when you have a diesel. Now, if you do have an option on the Ram, they have it hidden in the grill here. You have to find this. I actually pulled this down just to make life a little bit easier, but in reality, it's a lot harder to find if you don't know where to look. I love the way GM did theirs. It's off to the side. Now, you do have to plug a additional plug in here from them and take it out but i like that better because sometimes if you're in a rush you may forget to unplug this one but it's pretty apparent that you have to unplug it because you have to get into the driver's side and you'll see it running there so i think this is a better design and i think it's more functional too in comparison with the ram now let's talk about tires goodyear wranglers are pretty good tires from what i've seen they have pretty good capacity this is going to be a 275 65 tire, so 20 inch wheel, and your capacity is right here 3,750 pounds. As far as these Firestone tires that come standard on the Rams, I'm not a huge fan. They do wear out pretty quickly, especially if you're towing. And I don't like the white walls that you get with them, too, so I think it's a better advantage, also. Wind goes to the GM truck. Now let's talk about cab configuration. This is the largest cab you can get with the Silverado. Has great leg room, and I think it has good interior space back here. Of course you have some storage below the seat. Now, in order to get a cab to compete with this from Ram, you have to move to Mega Cab, which means you have to spend more money and you have to get four-wheel drive because in order to get the Mega Cab, you gotta get four-wheel drive. Now, although this cab is pretty big you got to pay extra for it so in my opinion the clear winner for this is going to be for the Silverado so if you don't want to spend more money on the cab configuration the Chevy is the way to go now as far as the bed configuration goes on the Ram this is going to be a six foot four inch bed I like GM's bed a lot better because this is a six foot nine inch bed and one thing that Ram did that's very unique to them is if you get the fifth hole prep package, they do move it slightly behind the rear axle, which gives you more clearance. I did a video on that, and I was able to make a 90 degree turn with my fifth wheel, and it didn't even touch. Now, I can turn pretty well with my Ram, but if I turn 90 degrees, I would definitely damage my Mega Cab. So, clear winner here is this has a larger bed, they move the fifth wheel prep package behind the axle 
and you have better clearance if you are towing a fifth wheel gooseneck trailer. Another advantage is you do have steps on each side of the bed too. Whereas with Ram, they do give you an optional step, but it's only on the other side of the truck if you do opt for it. This comes standard with GM trucks. Let's talk about your fuel and DEF. This mega cab is gonna have a 31 gallon fuel tank and a 5.7 gallon DEF tank. This Chevy Silverado is gonna have a standard 36 gallon fuel tank and a seven gallon DEF tank. And if you're towing a trailer, you obviously know that the Chevy Silverado is the clear winner here because seven gallon DEF goes a lot longer than 5.7 gallons and same thing goes for a 36 gallon fuel tank. Now let's talk about this rear suspension. I mean, I don't mind this coiled five link suspension, but I do prefer to have a leaf spring set up because if you move up to a one ton ram, they don't give you the five link coil suspension. So this is geared more towards comfort over towing. And in my opinion, I would prefer to have a leaf spring set up. So the clear winner here is GM. Now let's talk about the rear axle ratio on this truck. The rear axle ratio is gonna be a 342 compared to a 373. Now because this truck has a 10 speed transmission, the lower gears are a lot deeper in comparison then to the 68 RFE, which means you don't necessarily have to have a higher axle ratio. So you're gonna potentially get better fuel economy having a 342 versus the 373. And because the transmission has deeper first and second and third gears over the 68 RFE, you're gonna have better pulling power overall, okay? Numbers don't lie, I guess. So clear winner here, let's check Silverado. Out back. Ram does give you a rear backup camera. They also give you two cameras up top, something that they actually took from GM trucks. But one thing I like about the Chevy truck is, not only do they give you the camera, they also give you a light for your conventional trailer too. So if you're hooking up at night or unhooking, they give you a light here to see what's going on. Now we gotta talk about these tailgates. Now Ram does give you a way to drop the tailgate from the key. You can also drop the tailgate from inside the truck as well. Now, if you want to put it down, all you have to do is just hit the button twice. And it is assisted, so it's not gonna bang down or anything like that. Now watch this. If you push it again, it won't go back up. This is where GM just flexes on the ram. So they have the same button that you can push to drop the tailgate. You can do the same thing inside the truck. There's a button on the center dash that you can push. Now here's where GM wins. If you tap the button twice and hold the button, it'll put the tailgate back up for you like that. And even if you want to put the tailgate up inside the truck, you can do so. You just have to hold down this button and voila. Stepping inside of the GM truck, one thing I do like that this truck has is the tow mirrors. If you want to push them out, all you have to do is push a button inside. And what it's going to do is it's going to push the driver and the passenger side mirrors in and out with the push of a button. With Ram, you have to go on each side and put the mirrors up manually so they have not added power and so the clear winner is going to be the Silverado. We cannot deny the interior on the Ram however there are some advantages over the Ram truck in my opinion so let's go through a couple of them. Number one you can get a heads-up display with this GM truck that is not available with the Ram. GM was the first one to have the high definition rear view mirror. Ram just added this for 2021. And I also think that the camera system is a lot better on the GM truck, especially the 360 camera. So I'm gonna show you this one on the Chevy truck and then we'll walk over to the Ram truck and I'll show you why I like this one better, all right? So let's get into it. And all you have to do is scroll over 
and hit cameras. So right out of the gate, they give you your 360 camera on this side. You can adjust it front and rear just by pushing this button here. And you still have your 360 on this side, okay? You can also zoom in to the front and you can zoom in to the rear. I like this camera system also. It does give you like a rendering of your truck to give you an idea of you know where you are. So if you're trying to back this thing into a parking spot, you know, it makes it pretty easy for you to do that, okay? Up next is it gives you a side view for the rear and for the front. So then you can see where the tires are. I like this one. Ram does not have this camera view, just keep that in mind. And you can turn off that 360 camera and then have a wider view for all the cameras I just showed you, okay? And then just turn it back on that way. And if you're trying to park into a parking space, you do have these lines. They do move also. And then you have one for your trailer. Or if you don't want neither one on, you can turn it off. They have an arrow on the side. You want to click right there. And then they have your bed cameras that you can now zoom in. And then you also have a conventional hitch camera as well. And that's pretty much it. So I think that this is a better camera system. I think it's clearer. And even though it's on a smaller screen, let's go check out the Rams. When you step into the Ram, you notice that you do not have a heads up display. This is the highest trim level. This is a LTZ, so there is a high country, but you cannot even get that um, heads up display for this truck. And as I said earlier, GM was the first truck to have the high definition rear view. And let's take a look at these cameras. Now I'm already in the controls here. Let's go ahead and click on surround camera, okay? So although you have a 12 inch display, you only have a smaller area for your camera system. So as I was saying earlier, even though you have a smaller screen in the GM truck, you still have the same view in terms of size of your camera system as the RAM. Now, the 360 cameras right here, so it does show you like a, like, like a shorter view of the rear. Now, if you click this camera view, the 360 goes away and it gives you like a wider view for you there. Now, moving over, they have a frontal camera by itself and then you have, oops, let's go back one second, I'm sorry. And then they have actually a frontal view it's a little bit shortened, but then they give you your 360 back. Now it does have the lines on the side and it shows you the lines for the rear tires or what the direction they're going to be going in if you turn the steering wheel. I like that. And here's the cargo camera. You can zoom in. You've always been able to zoom in for this one. And then you have one out back that you can zoom into. And they also have the side view cameras as well. Now one thing I like about the GM better is I feel like the layout is a lot better now obviously you do have all the controls down below so you can kind of jump through everything down here but I just like how thought out GM does I think there's just a little bit cleaner a little bit easier to use it's all in the line you don't have to look for them because sometimes like when you have a little bit of pressure on you when you are using this camera system backing up your trailer I do find that the GM trucks just works a lot better all right so here's where GM destroys the Ram truck. When you take a look at the numbers here, you're gonna have a gross axle weight rating out front at 6,000 pounds, the rear is 6,040, and the truck has a 10,000 pound GVWR. All in, your payload capacity is gonna be 1,798 pounds, okay? On the Chevy Silverado, I love the fact that they give you a trailering information sticker. Ford doesn't do this, nor does Ram. I wish they would. You don't have to go online. You don't have to look up some PDF on their website to find the towing numbers. They put it right here for you. Now let's take a look at this first. So gross axle weight rating up front is 5,600 pounds. So it is lower than the Ram, but the one that really matters is the rear. Gross axle weight rating in the rear is 6,600 pounds. As you saw, Rams was 6,040. Another uh, benefit is this has a higher gross fuel weight at 11,350 pounds. So you have 1,350 pounds more of GVWR, which gives you more payload capacity, guys. That right there is what you want to see if you want to tow a fifth wheel 
that's what you want to see. So let's do the math real quick. 3,107 pounds minus 1,798. So you get 1,309 pounds more payload capacity in comparison with this Ram 2500. So here's what I can tell you. Make sure you do your research and buy the right truck. If you want to tow a fifth wheel, you have to get a Ram 3500. I do think that the Ram 3500 is better than the Chevy Silverado 3500 because you get the high output because of the Eisen. And I think that powertrain is a lot more reliable as of right now since the 10 speed hasn't been out that long. But all in all, the Chevy Silverado 2500 is the better truck in my opinion. And I'm hoping that Ram will see this video and they will up our GVWR for the three quarter ton segment. But on that note, thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope it was helpful. Be sure to like this video, subscribe to my channel, and I'll see you guys soon.